Hey, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to add single sign-on authentication to your Phoenix app using the POW Ascent library. At the end of this video, we'll have a Phoenix app that can connect and authenticate with Strava, and then we're just going to list uh, the user's recent activities. If you don't know what Strava is, it's basically a fitness tracking app. Uh, a lot of runners and cyclists use it. I'm going to get started by creating a new Phoenix application. Come on over to the terminal. I'm going to type mix phoenix.new my app. Uh, yes, install dependencies. It's running mixdeps.get and then it's going to build the static assets. Okay, now that that's finished building, I'm going to go into my application that I just generated. I'm going to create the database, mix echo create. And so let's start up the application. Next Phoenix dot server. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Cool, so here's our Phoenix app. The next thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all this content on the page and replace it with a, a table that's going to eventually list the user's Strava activities. So back in my terminal, I'm going to edit index.html. Here it is. And I'm just going to delete all of this. I went ahead and typed this out ahead of time. It's just a HTML table that has uh, four columns type. So this will be run or ride, the date, the time, and the distance. And then we're eventually going to have activities. So let's go update the template, um, or sorry, the controller. That some activities. For now, we'll just do an empty list. So then let's go back to the Phoenix app. And cool, we have an empty table. The next thing I want to do is make it so that only users who have already logged in can view this page. The POW and POW Ascent Phoenix libraries are going to help us with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the version. Here it is. This is the package we want, version 1.0.19. I'm going to edit my dependencies, the pow squiggly arrow and mix depths dot get. And then I'm going to come over to the to their GitHub guide. They have um, this quick setup guide that I like to follow. Looks like we need to do mix pow dot install. I'm just going to do a lot of copy pasta. Um, edit the config file. Uh, um. We also need to update our endpoint file with this plug. Paste it right there. And then we need to make some changes to the router. We need to use pow.phoenix.router. And we need to make a new pipeline called protected. And we also need to create a new scope that will have this power routes function in here. And copy this, paste that in there. I'm also going to take this chance to delete a couple things that we're not going to use. Finally, we need to add our new protected pipeline to our existing scope that we had our page controller running through. After that, let's start our app back up and see where we're at. Cool, so we can see that if we go to the home page, uh, we're actually redirected to the sign-in page, so it's working. The next thing I want to do is get rid of this sign-in sign -in page and replace it with a link to Strava for the single sign-on. So to do that, I'm going to come back into my mix file. Um, edit the dependency list, drop in the power sent library, save that, and then we're going to run mix deps.get to fetch, fetch the dependency. And then they've got a guide here on GitHub. Um, set up power sent. First thing we need to do is mix power sent.install. We also need to make some changes to the user schema, which was already generated for us when we set up the power library. 
need to add this line. Looks like that's the only one we need. We also need to make some changes to the router, uh, similar to how we did before. So I'm going to copy and paste all this. Use powersend.phoenix.router. And then we need a new pipeline, it's called skip CSRF protection. And that's just because as part of the OAuth flow, we don't want to do cross-site request forgery checking. And then we also need to make another new scope with PowerSent authorization post callback routes inside of it. Add that right here. And that uses the skip CSRF protection pipeline. And then finally, we need to add PowerSent routes down to this. So now we can run mix ecto.setup. Another thing we'll need to do is modify one of the generated templates that pow gave us. So I'm going to do mix pow.phoenix.gen templates. And then it says, please add web module to your configuration. So save that. And then it looks like it created this file, which is what we want. So this is what's giving us that sign-in page. I'm just going to delete all of this. And I'm going to replace it with this. This will list the different provider links that we're going to have in our application. We don't want paste. The next thing I want to do is set up a provider, an authentication provider. Uh, right under our existing how config, I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to change some things. This, this example is a GitHub strategy. Um, so if you were going to do OAuth against something like GitHub or Google, this is really all you would need. You would just need to add in your secret and your client ID. Um, but since ours, ours doesn't have a pre-made provider, we're going to make our own. So I'm going to change this to be Strava. I'm going to paste in my application's client ID from Strava. Also going to add the secret in. And then we're also going to replace the strategy because we're not using GitHub, we're going to use Strava. So I'm going to add my app Strava auth provider. This doesn't exist yet, but we're going to go create this right now. Strava auth provider. So there's a section on PowerSense GitHub README called Custom Provider. They have a link to how you can add your own. So this is what we're going to copy. Alright, so whoops. We're going to use the ascent.strategy OAuth2 base and build off of it. First, we're going to start with default config. We are going to replace our authorized URL with the one from Strava. And we're going to do the same thing for the token URL. Replace that with the one from Strava. I'm also going to replace this user URL, which is used to um, collect data about the, the user that comes back. So I'm replacing it with Strava's um, API slash athlete endpoint. So looking at the Strava authentication documentation, um, here's a list of scopes that you can use. So I'm going to update it. I'm going to update our app with some of these. Okay, so I've grabbed all the scopes that I think I'll need and pasted them here. Looking at Strava's documentation again, I think I want to add this approval prompt param as well and set it to force. We'll do that here. And that should be it. Let's see where we're at with our application now. Refresh the page, and you can see that we now have this sign in with Strava link. If I click on it, we are redirected to Strava. So let's see what happens when we click authorize. So it looks like we get an error. Um, that's expected for now. The reason this error is happening is because our app doesn't know how to map 
the athlete from Strava into the user in our database. And so if we go back to our custom provider function, you'll remember we gave it this user URL. And so there's this normalize function down below that accepts a user as a parameter. So the user from the user URL will come into this function and we need to map it into something that PAL can understand. So looking at the Strava API documentation, I can see that we have an ID. Uh, we also have a first name and a last name available to us. So we can go and add those things here. I'll add ID to the sub, a name I'm going to do first, first name, space, user, last name. Email we are not given, so I'm going to delete that. And I, to be honest, I don't know what this second part is for, so I'm just going to delete that. Save that file. So now I'm going to go back to the app and see if um, see if it's working. Sign in with Strava, authorize, and cool. We're redirected back to our app, um, and there's a there's a place that we can add an email. So I'm just going to add a fake email there. Cool, so this looks like it's working now. Um, we're no longer redirected to a sign-in page because we're authorized to see this page. The very last thing that we're going to do is grab this data from Strava. In order to be able to interact with Strava's API to list all the activities for an athlete, we need to use the access token that they've given us. The PowerSent library has a way for us to capture the access token. It looks like we can generate a migration to add a couple of new fields to the user identities table and then modify the user identities schema. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'll save that file and open up lib my app user identities user identity schema. Let's see what we needed from there. Looks like we need these two fields and then we also need this change set here. I'll save that and run the migration that we just made. Now I'm going to open up the page controller. I'm going to first get the current user by doing plug, pow.plug.currentuser. And then I'm going to use pattern matching to grab the access token off of the current user's identity. So I'm going to do an ecto query my app .get by. I'm going to query for the uh, user identity that is associated with the current user that we grabbed above. And then with that, uh, we have the access token. We're going to be creating an Elixir module called Strava API. It doesn't exist yet, but we'll be able to pass in the token and get a client back that we can use to interact with Strava's API. And then again, I can use pattern matching to grab the activities um, that are returned from Strava's API when we call Strava API.activities passing in the token. And then the last thing to do is update the render function to actually return the activities instead of an empty array. So now we can go start building our uh, Strava API Elixir module. Um, off camera, I went ahead and installed the Tesla HTTP client library for Elixir. Uh, this will help us be able to interact with Strava's API. And they have an example here that I'm going to copy. This example is interacting with a GitHub API, uh, so I'm just going to copy it and tweak it to meet our needs. Live my app Strava API.ex. Paste this in here, change the name my app.strava API. And so we're going to change this a little bit. We don't need this function. We're going to change issues. We're not going to re request issues. We're going to request activities. Athlete activities. And then down here for client, uh, we can replace this string with the Strava base URL for their API. And then we will change this to bearer if I can spell it, bearer. All right, now we can test this out. 
Let's start our Phoenix app back up and see what we got. Sign in with Strava, authorize. Oh, looks looks like I made a typo. This should be my app dot repo dot get by. There we go. Uh, looks like we have we're now authenticated, and we are listing all of this user's recent activities. So hopefully this video has been helpful in showing how quick and easy it is to add single sign-in authentication to your app using uh, Pow Ascent and Pow Elixir libraries. Um, and really this is just scratching the surface of what those libraries can do. Dan Schultzer is the author of uh, Pow and Pow Ascent, and he's done an amazing job He's very active in the community, very helpful, so thanks to him. Also, if you're looking for more info about uh, these libraries, um, the documentation is great. I would recommend just going and looking at the documentation. And then also there's, um, there's a great video by James Moore about uh, this same topic, so I'd recommend checking that out as well. Thanks for watching.